Hey guys, Sean here, and wow, I'm back, cause, cause bombs have been dropped, and shit has gone down, and I had so much to say earlier in the afternoon before Sony's press conference that I wanted to get out there, and then Sony came in, and they, and they threw the right, and they threw the left, the and they threw the right again, they landed a knee, they went to the ground, they threw some elbows, like, <laughs> Sony took Microsoft and, and the smacked objective. them around, like, this their first time in the fucking octagon, and it was ugly, and it was bad, and... I don't know. It, I don't even know if they smacked them around with like, hey, we got these awesome games and we're the best console. They just smacked them around in terms of like mentioning that we're not taking away gamers' rights and just these things. Like, I wasn't too concerned about used games and things like that. I don't buy used games very often, like probably once a year. And that's only because like GameStop has a sale and it's like 99 cents as opposed to like 8 bucks or something, you know. So that's why I'll go in and get that or... Maybe if they have, like, a buy two, get one free, I'll buy two $55 games that are used, and then get another, basically, brand new game free. So I get, like, three newly released games for the price of two, which is always a good deal. But other than that, I really am not interested in it. Um, I was very concerned about the always online-ish thing, the 24-hour check-in, only because I've had bad experiences with similar systems. Now... I have internet. I don't live in the middle of nowhere. Um, it doesn't go down very often unless in like a horrible, horrible storm that like takes down power lines and shit. So I wasn't too worried about that. Like usually, if I don't have internet, I also don't have power. So no matter what the fuck console I have, it's not going to make a difference. So usually that's how it is. But I'm I'm looking at this from this perspective, and this is the perspective you've all got to get on board with because this is how it works in the world. In the current generation, the 360 is better than the PS3 because third-party titles tend to run better on the 360. First-party titles on the PS3 run amazing and they look amazing, but third-party titles are always a little bit off for whatever reason. Flag. What do you want? What's the reason you? What? What is it? First of all, the PS3 is hard to develop. For. Um, but, second of all, there's more people on the Xbox, so that's where developers can develop their games and then port them from. Both of the architectures are very similar on the PS4 and the Xbox One, so I don't know if there's going to be this big of an issue. But I can tell you one thing, the PS4 is going to reach casual consumers a lot better we have than the, the Xbox. Flag. Here's why. Our flag has well, been first taken. of all, you have the price, $399 versus $499, which, to me, isn't a total game changer, like a hundred bucks isn't that big of a deal, but just think of it this way, if you go into GameStop that first day, or wherever the fuck you purchase it, and you buy a PlayStation, you can get another game, and still save forty bucks, um, and then walk out of the store, as opposed, like, you can get a game for the price of, like, you're just buying more games at launch, that's, you have more money to spend on these games, plus the forty bucks on top of the game that you save, it goes towards the PlayStation Plus that you do need for online, which I think was kind of not a mistake from Sony. Um, PlayStation Plus, I had it until recently. Mine expired, and I just didn't renew it right now. But it it was a great deal, and it was basically you didn't need it. You just had it. Um, now, needing it for multiplayer, the only reason I wouldn't have gone with it if I were Sony is they could have dropped Microsoft to the top of a skyscraper. <laughs> like, they would have fell on their head. Um, I would have been happier if Sony used it as, you know, you get cross-game chat and these things. But, as far as, like, hardcore gamers go anyway, in, if cross-game chat wasn't it, you were going to buy it anyway. And as far as casual go, I don't even know if that's the enemy play play multiplayer, so they might not even worry about PlayStation Plus, so then they might win anyway. But, what I was trying to say is, the PlayStation, based on its price point, pretty much alone, will probably sell more at launch. Which opens the door for third parties to worry more about the PlayStation side than the Xbox side simply because there's a bigger install base. Now, I'm not saying that's how it's going to work, but usually you price lower, you have similar specs, you're offering similar things. That's what's going to change the minds of the consumers. And, you know, me, personally, I don't think I'm going to buy both because no one... Like, when I bought my PlayStation originally, I went ahead and bought an Xbox later on because I wanted to play Halo, and I had a bunch of friends who had an Xbox, and I wanted to play Call of Duty with them. That's why I bought the Xbox. And then I've kind of drifted more towards the Xbox because I play a lot of Call of Duty and competitive 
Call of Duty has taken place on the Xbox in recent years. Enemy flag um, there was a year on PS3, so take that with a grain of salt. But you know, as far as which one do I like better, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. The whatever the controller on the Xbox, I've drifted more towards, um, and I like it now. But I never had an issue with the PS3 controller before, so. Like, it doesn't matter. If, and right now, when round. I go to the PS3 controller, it's, I don't have an issue. I don't complain about it. It's just... I've drifted more towards liking the Xbox's controller, but in the end, it makes really no difference to me. I'll play with either one of them. I don't really have a problem. Um, I have to get used to the PS3 Capture controller when I go flag. back to it for, like, shooters, but otherwise, it's not a big deal. And I'll I have so many things in my head that I wanted to say that I'm, like, going to run out of time and I'm going to forget them because I am rambling, and I'm really <laughs> losing my place, but bear with me, guys. Um, so... Also, the thing the Xbox has right now, if I had to pick the one thing it has on its side, is Titanfall, which is the shooter from Respawn Entertainment, the former Infinity Ward guys, uh, who last worked on Modern Warfare 2. Okay, so, I personally believe, minus one man army and some other things that are a little weird in that game, Commando and such, and stupid shit, like that, I believe Modern Warfare 2 is probably... One of the finest moments, if not the best, in Call of Duty's series. Our flag has been dropped. Um, I think it implemented the stacking kill streaks well. I think it, it did a lot of things well. Its hit detection was amazing. It, it did a lot of things really, really well. And, you know, I think Black Ops 2 is on the right track and doing good. Um, I, Modern Warfare 3 wasn't terrible, but I don't think they really did anything that I liked particularly. So. Anyway, they worked on a really good game. It's exclusive to the Xbox One and PC. However, it's published by EA. And here is my point, which someone's going to believe me because I promise you in the future this is going to come through and you're going to listen to me and you're going to be like, hey, he was right. Okay, Titanfall will come to the PS4. Whether Titanfall 1 comes to the PS4 or a sequel, there will be a Titanfall game on the PS4. How do I know this? Well, it's published by EA. If it was published by Microsoft, I tell you there's no chance in hell. However, it's published by EA, which means technically it's a third party. Meaning Microsoft gave EA money to get an exclusive deal for consoles, because they don't have an exclusive deal overall, they have for consoles. I know Windows is Microsoft, but that really has nothing to do with it. Um, so, there's that. And, Mass Effect was published by EA exclusive to down. the Xbox, but then later came to the PS3. So, games that are published by EA, they're not going to stay exclusive to Microsoft. And the, my, the grand overlying point that ties into what I said earlier was, not only do I think just based on the logic of EA's making the game, they're going to want to sell it to the most people possible by putting it on both consoles, down. and Hostile Microsoft probably only has an exclusive deal for Titanfall 1, if, if it's even that, maybe it's like six months. But... Second of all, if more people, even if they're casual, EA doesn't really give a shit, buy the PS4, then they buy the Xbox One, well, now you have a bigger install base on the PS4, and I doubt EA signed a 10-year deal with Microsoft for Titanfall. They're going to bring Titanfall to the PS4, there's more players there, that's where it's going. So, the lower price, the, you know, used games, all these things that Sony pointed out about the PS4, that will grow their install base will bring Titanfall to the PS4 in the future. So maybe not right now, maybe not this one, maybe it's two, three years down the line. But I promise you, if the only thing getting you to buy an Xbox One is Titanfall, don't do it. Confirmed. Just don't. There's there's no reason. If you like everything else the PlayStation 4 is doing and you're like, mm, but I want to play Titanfall, don't. Because, first of all, we don't even know if it's a good game. For all we know, it's the worst game ever. Just because Respawn's making it doesn't mean that they're going to make a good game. I mean, they can make a bad game. I think it looks good, but again, I mean, there's nothing saying it's perfect. No one reviewed it and gave it a 10 out of 10. We watched a little bit of gameplay. Okay? Um, I don't think that Halo is a big draw anymore, or at least it, I don't think it should be the thing you decide based on, but they have Halo, so that's where I'm going. Because, I don't know, Halo hasn't changed much as far as I'm concerned. Call of Duty, they have timed DLC on Xbox, but has been taken. I don't think Call of Duty's going to make it very much farther. I, that, 
the trailer and the gameplay we show it looks like fight. the same thing Our I've played and I'm captured. starting to lose interest and I know a lot of YouTubers who had been doing all the other way through starting to lose interest. I'll still probably buy Call of Duty Ghosts because it's multiplayer fun. It just it is. Our that's what it is. But it's only fun if you're taking it seriously. And I think the less people take it seriously, the less people will be playing it, buying it. And slowly it'll fade away because they didn't wow me. I don't think they did anything. I think they have moving fish. I think that was their great revelation from the press conference. They have moving fish. Which I swear has happened in games on like the PS2. So, hallelujah for the moving fish. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So, the moving fish. Uh, also, we got... Uh, what do we got? I just had something in my head, and I, I totally am blanking now. Uh, well, the Xbox has cable TV, which... Last time I checked, your cable comes with a cable box, so you don't really need an Xbox. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't even watch TV, really. I mean, sports. That's what the TV goes on for, and... Really, I don't need it, particularly, because... A lot of things I watch are streamed places and things happen and I use my computer for everything in life. Um, another thing I noticed, which isn't the thing I wanted to say, I'm trying to find what I wanted to say but I can't remember. Another thing I noticed is the obsession with tablets. And just keep in mind that this is going to be a thing that all the games for the first year or two of this cycle include and then it will be gone. Because they do this all the time. Every generation has that gimmick thingy that we need to do because the people want it. And then it comes out and the people don't want it and they stop putting it in their games. You know, all the companies are going, hey, do this because we can do it. Hey, do that. And nobody cares. <laughs> and nobody's going to do All the developers put it in and then it's never going to work. And it will be gone and we'll forget it and it won't be necessary. Oh, I wanted to talk about Battlefield 4. Which is going to lose my thing about the headsets. Remember the headsets, guys. Um, <laughs> but Battlefield 4. Uh, all i got to say is that skyscraper collapsing. Extremely impressive. Everything else was like, alright. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not saying it's a terrible game. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But it looked like Battlefield 3 got a map pack. From what I was watching, it didn't look special. And again, that's not me saying that Call of Duty doesn't look like Call of Duty got a map pack. It does. It really does. Um, I think the one thing I like about Call of Duty is there are the perks and things, which I know are usually also the same, but I like the the creating a class and like just having a bit of variation where Battlefield's kind of... Yes, there's variation, there's things you can do, but it's closer to a military sim, although it's not really very close to a military sim, but it's closer... And so every time I see them progress, it's like I, I've seen this before. And like there were the spark things in the tr like the Battlefield 4 gameplay that I saw. And it was like, that looks a lot like Battlefield 3. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad game. But Battlefield 3 was, it was good, but eh, I didn't really play it. This kind of looks a lot similar. It doesn't look like they did much, which I know Battlefield Call of Duty, they don't really do much, but... Hey, um, another thing, because I know I'm rambling now, I'm going to have to do another video after when you guys, like, respond to me and, like, figure out what the hell I was trying to say. Um, go to my Twitter. It's really helpful. Um, but Titanfall looked like Crisis. That was another thing I wanted to point out, or at least to me. And I think the last thing I want to go with here is they didn't say, but judging based on what they did with the PS3, Sony will probably have Bluetooth headsets and... You know, all that stuff, the controller, just plug it in, Bluetooth controller, all these things. And the Xbox is going to have the data port, which is proprietary, and you need to buy a headset that works specifically with the Xbox One. Now, that's not to say that if you have, like, A40s right now from Astro, that Astro won't release a new data cable or mix amp or whatever to make them compatible. But, you know, as far as things like that go, their peripherals are exclusive to them as where... I'm assuming, similar to the PS3 with Sony, you get a Bluetooth headset, you put it on your head, it works. You plug a USB headset in, it works. You plug it, like, it just works. Things just work. You don't need a special thing to do anything with it. And that's that. And I think that that is exciting as far as you don't have to go buy hundreds of dollars worth of new equipment. Now, maybe Astro sells a data cable that's 10 bucks, but that's still 10 bucks I don't have to spend if I have a PlayStation just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
And now I lastly want to close on this point for the video. Um, again, I said I'll do another one probably trying to sort out my thoughts because I have to go through my Twitter because I was saying a lot of things that I wanted to remember and then I went ham during the Sony thing. Um, but Sony said a lot of things about, you know, maintaining gamers' rights. And I'll link the video about how to share use, how to share games, which I think is a hysterical video. But they mentioned rights and not taking them away and stuff like that all throughout the press conference. And I agree with them in that sense. I play on PC. I own 100-something games on Steam. I can't trade them. But the one thing that makes that okay with me on Steam is I usually buy them for $5, $7, $10. Like, there's a bunch of sales. I don't mind not being able to trade it in when it's on sale. But when I buy a $60 game, I want to be able to trade it. Now, I don't. I personally don't, so it doesn't really affect me. But there are other people who will want to, and in the future when I have to like pay for a house and things like that, I'm going to want to be able to get rid of the thing to make the money to buy another game. Right now, any money I have, I just spend on whatever I want, and it's like happy times, and I just spend it. But... You know, eventually there will be a thing where I, like, have to pay for stuff, and it's like I can't afford to just throw money at the walls. It's not going to work out. And finally, to close, I do want to say that I'm not particularly a fan of either one. Um, I definitely sound like a Sony fan. And I, I think I am kind of a Sony fan in spirit. Like, I really want Sony to succeed. I want them to do well. Because I just think there's this smugness... On Microsoft, I know it's a business for both of them, and they're both trying to make money. But this something comes off wrong about Microsoft with whatever they do, whether it's Windows, whether it's Xbox, whether it's Microsoft Word. Like, there's just this thing about them that irritates me, and I don't know. It it just them and like Apple, they both kind of rub me the wrong way. And Sony has yet to do anything to totally make me want to like jump out a window. So. I'm more inclined to be on their side, but as far as this goes, I I was really open to buying either one. I'm definitely leaning heavily towards Sony right now. Um, you know, I'm gonna give them a couple days each, but I'm probably gonna pre-order a PlayStation 4 at least, you know, kind of right now, and then we'll see where that takes me. But it's looking like I'm gonna be get a PS4. I I really. Microsoft also has Twitch, but they didn't say that was exclusive, so I assume eventually Twitch will come to the PlayStation. And besides, like I was trying to say on Twitter, anyone who live streams, they're not going to want to use the in-game the in like game thing because then you can't do any of the overlays we do and all that fancy stuff we do. So I don't know what the deal is going to be with copyright protection and stuff, but I'm hoping that they can get a way to make it when I have a game in that I can use HDMI into a card, because right now you can't, and I'm hoping they figure that out, because Microsoft used to do it, but they changed it recently, and now you can't do it, so you have to use component, but I do think the PlayStation 4 still has component, the Xbox One doesn't, so there's another thing for live streamers, you know, keep that in mind, you, right now, HDMI has copyright protection on both systems, so if you want to live stream uh, off the console, you're not going to be able to. It's just not possible. So keep that in mind as well for those of you out there who are into the YouTubes. But right now it's looking like a Sony victory and a happy dance. And the other thing I wanted to say really quick, I know I've, I've gone on for 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> I'll probably, I don't know, maybe I'll keep this as one. I was going to do it with a vlog, but then I didn't. And now I'm wishing I did because I don't have anything to fill this time. But the other thing that I wanted to say was... I'm buying this for sports games and exclusives, and I'm really buying it for the UFC game, like, pretty much. Uh, I'm also buying it for sports games in general, because when people come over, you play sports games. You know, you occasionally play, like, Grand Theft Auto, and you switch off and people die and things like that, but you play sports games. It's just what you do. So, that's why I need a console. I mean, I can save $100, have really cool exclusives, it looks like and play my sports games. Okay, Sony, take my money, eat it, throw it in the air, have a birthday party with it, I don't give a fuck, just go have a good time with my money. And if I know Rocket, uh, who makes DayZ, DayZ's coming to the PS4. He said he wanted to bring it to consoles in the future after they get the PC side of it sorted out. Um, Microsoft is a dick, according to him, and he hates them, so PS4 looks like a pretty nice uh, landing place for DayZ.
Can't wait for DayZ. Sometime this month the Alpha is supposed to launch and I am pumped. I do fucking cartwheels. Oh, I can't wait. I'll be back on YouTube when DayZ is out. Re ready to go. <laughs> ready, ready to go. Alright, uh, anyways guys, thanks for thanks for hanging out listening to me. What do you think? What are you getting? Um, I just want to urge you guys not to be in this mindset of like, I have to get the Xbox or I have to get the PlayStation because I have a PS3 or because I have an Xbox 360. Just pick the better one. That's all there is to it. And if the people start picking the PlayStation or they start picking the Xbox, the exclusives will go to the one that has the more fans, the, you know, exclusive DLC. All these things will go to the one with the more fans. The more money you give Sony, the more money they have to spend. The more money you give Microsoft, the more money they have to spend. So just think of it that way. Either one of them can win. You really just have to pick with your wallet. And I just... I saw some people on Twitter like, I'm still getting an Xbox. Because they're better. Or whatever. Like, you can believe they're better. Fine. But it sounded a lot like you picked Microsoft at the beginning. You picked them the last generation. And now you're just being stubborn and not willing to admit that maybe they fucked this one up. I don't know. I think they fucked up. I think that they made poor decisions. And last thing I wanted to say, this is what I wanted to say earlier. Um, they released a new Xbox 360 redesign. It looks a lot like the Xbox One. And I just wanted to say that, okay, Xbox One is a confusing title for consumers anyway. So now say someone buys a new 360 right now. And it's that redesign model. They put it in their living room. And then grandma's sitting there and she's going to buy her grandson something for Christmas. And she sees, you know, below her TV... This beautiful Xbox, and then on the TV comes a commercial for the Xbox One, which looks exactly the same. Okay, it's it's a one, so it's the first one, right? And I have that thing under my TV. Oh, I don't need that. Like, it's just such a confusing thing for the consumer, and I don't understand why they keep doing it. Like, I think Xbox One is a stupid enough and confusing name anyway. So let's make the 360 look identical, because that can't blow the mind of the consumer. Like, ugh. It's just, it's mind-numbing, really. It's like... Why? <laughs> Why do you insist on this stupidity? But, uh, yeah, so, anyways, guys, let me know what you think, which one you're getting, or which one you're leaning towards, reasons why, and we'll probably discuss in another video, because I've gone on far too fucking long. So, have a nice day, uh, bye, maybe I'll fill this with pictures, or something. <laughs> See ya.